I'm a secondary school teacher. I take pictures of families. An epidemiologist at CAFA. Dr. Janelle Lazama. Associate professional. Fashion designer. I'm a professional athlete. I'm an ICU doctor. The coronavirus pandemic is an epidemiological and psychological crisis. The enormity of living in isolation, changes in our daily lives, job loss, financial hardship, and grief over the death of loved ones has the potential to affect the mental health and well-being of many. Disease itself, multiplied by forced quarantine to combat COVID-19, applied by nationwide lockdowns, can produce acute panic, anxiety, obsessive behaviors, hoarding, paranoia, depression, and post-traumatic stress disorder in the long run. These have been fueled by an infodemic spread via different platforms of social media. Nevertheless, frontline healthcare workers are at higher risk of contracting the disease as well as experiencing adverse psychological outcomes in the form of burnout, anxiety, fear of transmitting infection, feelings of incompatibility, depression, increased substance dependence, and PTSD. Community-based mitigation programs to combat COVID-19 will disrupt children's usual lifestyle and may cause florid mental distress. The moment it struck was when my friend called me, she was like, Jen, what are you going to do? And I was just like, dude, like, I was totally at that point living in, what do you mean? Then my aunt kind of was just like, you know, how business? And I was just like, what is everybody talking about? Then I was kind of like really going into like what's happening. Then in my mind, I was just like, okay, Janelle, you're going to stay calm. You're going to stay positive. I had to say it out loud in order for it to make sense. And then that literally just dictated how I move forward, yeah. I'm just fed up. I think everybody is just fed up of the entire pandemic. I know that people are also feeling the dollars and the cents, but I think the emotional tool is way more than the economic tool on people. Definitely, because I feel like all the measures that were taken to kind of control the spread I feel like nobody really considered how negatively these things could impact people, how like loneliness could kind of set in because you're just isolating yourself and you're kind of just home with the same people all the time, how that could affect like a family dynamic, how it could affect your relationship with your family, how it could affect you personally. So I feel like there's a lot of discussion and a lot of research to kind of be done to see just how badly the pandemic kind of affected people's mental health but I feel like majority of people have felt some sort of negative effect on their mental health at some point. COVID, we used to intubate people so to intubate somebody is to put a tube in your trachea which would connect the anesthetic machine to your lungs and we used to put that tube in, you have to pretty much open person's mouth with a metal blade and look at the back of their throat and put the tube in of course with them asleep and we used to do that and it, so now that is considered an aerosol generating procedure which is one of the most high risk procedures to spread covid and we used to do that without any face mask at all like this used to be my face in people's faces all the time all day and i was never scared about it and now to intubate somebody i have to wear a N95 mask, a face shield, a hat, a gown, two pairs of gloves, shoe covers, my rosary, everything. So people who like literally lost in your thoughts, like people that suffer with anxiety, when you have nothing to do, it flares it up even more. So I have friends that are literally anxious because like they're not the number of things they have to do have like gone down so much. So it's like you're all in your thoughts, like, am I doing things right? life going good i can't so all of those things and it's like personal friends so it's like you have to kind of understand as much as you could and they look at me now as like a beacon of oh gosh she have everything together you know and i tell them the hissy fits and stuff i go through and all of those things but which is normal but they look at me 
you know, as a, a beacon of hope to kind of calm them down. So, you know, and I also take on that role, but I, I, I have definitely seen people just, and, and like stories of people committing suicide. So, you know, but my role, which I have accepted, was just like kind of just talk things through. It's, it's, it's just not easy dealing with it but definitely very close friends of mine have, have issues with what's going on now. Mental health is a real thing and I think the pandemic has allowed us to realize that people need help with their mental health. Children are not the face of this pandemic, but they risk being among its biggest victims. While they have thankfully been largely spared from the direct health effects of COVID-19, at least to date, the crisis is having a profound effect on their well-being. All children of all ages and in all countries are being affected by the socio-economic impacts and in some cases by mitigation measures that may inadvertently do more harm than good. The worldwide closure of schools has no historical precedent. 188 countries have imposed countrywide closures, affecting more than 1.5 billion children and youth. Right here in Trinidad and Tobago, we see children being affected by the postponement of SEA and the shift to virtual class, where many students do not have the necessary devices and infrastructure to participate. There is also a group of children that are being robbed of the opportunity to develop social skills, having never stepped foot in a school. It is very hard to not have the village. You know, they say they take a village to raise a child and it's very, very hard to just be doing it on your own. And especially when lockdown now started last year, we just kind of closed off from everybody. The only person outside of my husband and I who saw Holly was, my, was his mother. And that's because she lives with us, you know. Um, it's been it's been a, quite a task. Luckily, she at that point she wasn't even a year yet, so she didn't know what she was missing. She couldn't ask me. I want to go to the park. I want to see so and so. Um, now, however, a year later, she can ask those things. What I could see how it impacted her is um, she has a speech delay um, from the lack of interaction. Right. This pandemic has affected school children tremendously. So, to the point where, do you let them stay home? Yes, they're safe. But what about their schooling? What about their social being? So it's very difficult for nearly all our nation's school children. To the point where you speaking with them online and they can't wait for school to start back. They're hoping to, for school to start back. So it's a very technical, tricky balance that I guess the whole world is going through right now. There's a level of guilt that comes in there as well because you know you see a lot of the other parents who uh, have the extra time to spend with the children, whereas my son has to do all his activities and spend most of his time with a caregiver because mommy and daddy not available because of work. And it makes you feel guilty. You feel like you're taking away some of that special, you know, one-on-one -on -one time, you know, to be learning things with them or seeing him develop and seeing him, you know, learn new things or say new things. I got home the other day and my son is telling me the names of dinosaurs and I'm just here like when 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 did we learn this I was not a part of that so you feel left out as well where some of my friends have had more time to spend with their children I am having significantly less time to spend with mine because of the demand from work and it does take a toll on you like sometimes you sit there and you're like is it worth it yeah, okay, yeah, still, I, my, my income was not affected, but is the money that I'm making worth the time that I'm losing to see my child grow up? Another critical impact here in TNT has been the increase in domestic violence. In 2020, 46 women were killed, 21 of them in domestic violence situations. Persons were made to stay indoors with no outlet for their anger or stress, heightened by their new forced way of living. This increase in violence highlighted the need for a spotlight to be placed on anger management and coping mechanisms for other psychological and psychosocial or mental health illnesses 
that we previously masked with alcohol and liming. You have to think about everybody else. So people are losing their jobs because we are back in lockdown. And you know, you might not be affected by it, but your behaviors will affect the general population because if you are going out and you are partying and you are not following the protocols and you are spreading COVID, then everybody is going to feel the brunt of it. So the people who are actually following the protocols and trying to do their best to protect their loved ones are going to be affected by whatever you do. So stop being essentially selfish and start thinking about everybody as a whole. It's not just about you. The pandemic is affecting everybody globally. So it's not, it's not just unique to Trinidad or unique to you. No, Trini, I can't speak for anywhere else, but in Trinidad, unless you can't see what someone is struggling with, um, it doesn't exist. You know, it's not real. It's just in your head and you can get over it. You're fine, um, which is something I've been told a lot in my life. You know, you, what do you have to be depressed about when it's, it's much more going on than that? And if I, don't you think that I want to be happy and I want, like, what? Who wants to feel that? Who wants to feel like there's no point in waking up in the morning? No one, right? I assume no one wants it. Um, so yeah, I think it would do our communities great, great benefits if we can put in the work and get the help to people that they need, you know? I think I worded it that way, but you get the point. <laughs> Too much emphasis has been placed on the burden of this pandemic on economies and businesses. We are ignoring the main victims to this widespread disease, the people. This piece seeks to give a voice to the individual in hopes that through our shared struggles, we can come together and support one another through this hard period. As much as I told you that I was sheltered by the time I was in Greece, my, my aunt in um, New York got COVID. I mean, she was sheltered as well, but COVID found her. Um, her, her daughters and nurse who was in, was in contact with COVID patients and you know even though she never left home she ended up getting COVID because her daughter um, was in contact and she had underlying conditions and that really took a toll on her like she was in ICU and everything and like it hit home at that time it was like wow like as much as you're like people are dying all over the world but these are people you don't know right but as soon as it hits home, it's like, oh my God, this is real. Even though you know that this is real, it's like, whoa, this is, it's real, real, you know? Um, and that happened and it brought my family, like my family is really close knit, it? And it brought my family even closer. Like we started to have like Zoom prayer meetings every day for my aunt because she was not doing really well. And when it, it got my aunt in New York and then by the time I got home, I was in quarantine. My aunt at home in Trinidad got COVID and I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> and I couldn't even go home. I couldn't even finish my quarantine at home. I had to go by my other aunt. And, you know, COVID started to really affect my family. Um, and before all of this, I was like, I'm not getting this vaccine. Like, I don't know what, I mean, I had a discuss discussion with you already. And I had my thoughts about it and stuff. And I was like, no, I don't really want to get this vaccine. I, I, I was paranoid about the vaccine more than I was about COVID. Um, and because I was heading home, I was like, darling, really, maybe this vaccine is probably the, th the right thing to do. Um, and I even spoke, my mother had her own, like she was skeptical about it as well. Um, and I even spoke to her about it. I was like, mommy, I have a, a registration form if you want it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, my, and at the, in the meantime, my sister is in the States and she's like, no, you're gonna have to get the vaccine. And she's going crazy about this. So. Like, it really affected my family in different ways. And um, now my mind is just, is just in a better place when it comes to speaking about the vaccine and accepting the vaccine. And I'm really more open now to, to taking it. And also, but more so too, because I think it will become mandatory for travel. And because I do plan on leaving Trinidad soon or whenever, I think, um, I would take it for these reasons as well. So, um, yeah. Of course, of course, it was trouble because it's like you know you have a plan and you know you line up everything according to this plan, and then this thing just happens, and now everything is out of your control. The borders are closed, and that's out of your control. There's nothing you can do. 
this happens and there's nothing you could do so I mean it was very mentally taxing especially for me as somebody who's like really organized and like kind of plans out everything in my mind to have those plans just kind of like you know when I would have done infectious disease modeling I would have seen how quickly a disease can spread in theory you know in an equation or based on any of the models that we used and you know you were talking about um, the R naught of a particular disease and you're looking at if one person get infected how many persons they could possibly infect and you look at the spread and you plan and you plot but when it actually happens it is a, is a it's a totally different experience so while I knew in theory that we can have a global pandemic we can have a possible disease outbreak that we could see transcending borders and literally in every country on the earth. I never expected to live through it. So I mean, it's, it's going to be a challenge. Like for, I know, for example, my principal has said, once school has reopened, that first week, we're not going to focus on your academics. We're going to focus on your socialization, have activities, get to know each other again, because the reality is, so there are a whole year group that has come from primary school into secondary school, and then it never has have stepped a foot inside the school. And just now, this might go to the next academic year. It actually opened my eyes a lot because I realized that a lot of people would message me and say, you know, thanks for posting this. They're so glad to see that somebody else is feeling that way. And it makes me actually feel happy to know that other people feel the same way that I feel about certain things. You know, so it's an outlet. Opening up, speaking to people, definitely you get to see that you are not alone in the way that you're feeling about things. You know, I, I just started interacting more with customers, little internet games, trying to find out, you know, what they're doing, if they're still working, like what, what your life is about. So, you know, naturally I'm a personable person, so I had to kind of incorporate that even more in business. And that literally kept the other side of my business afloat. So it caused me to be very innovative and um, although one side of the business like is dead in work wise because there are no carnivals now, you have to think more, design more, kind of, I mean, I was techie, built a website, you know, all those types of things. So I think it brought out the best and the worst. If I'm being perfectly honest with you, already in a very dark place with postpartum depression and as the months just kept rolling by it just got worse and worse and worse until I finally um, started therapy in November and more recently went to a psychiatrist because it just got that bad. Um, I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder as well as ADHD which I didn't know I had but that would have been like my whole life and explains a lot of why I'm so bizarre but um, but yeah no now I'm on meds for it and you know I'm a big proponent for like a big supporter of people going to therapy and getting the mental health that they need but COVID and that um, not having the interaction not having help especially as a new mother that was that was hard and that definitely you know you you go into motherhood thinking feeling anyway uh, society makes you feel like you're supposed to know what you're doing and you have no idea and you feel completely lost and like you're drowning and gasping for air and everybody's just walking around like what's wrong with you you're fine get over it so there was a point in time during the pandemic when i felt like i was just obsessed with the pandemic and i had to like no i was reading everything and because you're a doctor everybody looking up to you expecting you to have all the knowledge and all the answers so I was just obsessing, trying to read everything, look at everything, know everything. And at some point I had to say, Jimmy, you'll just relax. In March 2020, when we had the first confirmed case of COVID, I think all of us were very scared because we didn't know what to expect. And I think if we go as far back as November 2019, when we were hearing about this distant virus in China, never thought it would ever come here. Never thought we would have to prepare for something like this. But then when it eventually came here, we had to basically upheave all of our protocols and do everything over. We had to source PPE. 
we had to do all of these repetitive drills, practicing putting on PPE and taking it off. And um, we were all very scared at first. And luckily in the beginning, it wasn't as bad as we had expected it to be. It wasn't as bad as it was in Europe or those other countries, but we were all pretty scared at first. It has changed everything. It's everybody and we all need to be in it together and just do what we need to do to try to get out safely. <laughs> People just need to have an open mind and just stop comparing your country situation with other situations. You'll appreciate why you have so much more and cleanse your mind and just like stay focused. It will, it will subside, it will come to an end soon.